We'll open up to Aaron Portline. Go ahead, Aaron. Thanks, Glenn. Good day, Yarmo. Um, Hello. Your sense of what were your emotions yesterday to get line A done and, and to sort of put to bed, I think, the major moves you needed to make this summer uh, to get line A done to get CAP compliant? Is there relief in there? Is there excitement? What, are, what all is going through your, through your mind? Definitely mixed emotions. Um, probably the hardest decision I ever had to make as a GM of the Blue Jackets to trade Oliver Bjorkstrand, who I think very highly of, not, not just as a hockey player, but as a person. He's been part of us and our organization for nine years. And that was my first draft with the Blue Jackets and, and, and haven't personally seen him and scouted him when I actually went to see Seth Jones quite a bit and, and, and kept noticing Oliver Bjorkstrand and, and, and seeing him grow and win the championship in Cleveland with us and become a real good player in the NHL was, was, was so hard to, uh, to, uh, to uh, make that decision. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it is the, uh, the ugly part of the business, I guess that's, that's what you got to call it. And um, that decision had to be made. The, um, you know, you can, you can easily calculate the cap space around the whole league and, and there was no good options available for us. Really, this was the best of the no good options uh, that was available for us to become cap compliant and um, it had to be done. You've, uh, you've been on the other side of this where you're willing to take on money. I think this is the first time you've been on this side of it where you're needing to unload. Um, and I know you, you had a pretty good feel for what the marketplace was like, but was it surprising to you once you got inside it how difficult it was? Even we're talking really good players with term and with respect to, to Bjorkstrand. Yeah, we, we had not planned or counted on getting Johnny Goodrow and that changed everything. So had we been able to sort of count on it and plan it, then we would have obviously been in a better position to make some of these moves ahead of time so that we didn't get squeezed. But once an opportunity like that came up and, and, and in front of us and, and we, we knew that it was real, we just had to get it done. You just can't pass on a player like that. Yeah. And, and did you, did it take you time to track down Oliver Bjorkstrand yesterday? I know he's on his honeymoon. Was he a hard guy to reach after Liney's contract was, was settled? Was the trade in place at that point? <laughs> Not a, no, it wasn't a hard, hard, um, he, he answered the phone, um, or didn't answer the phone. I texted him to call me and he called me right away. And we had a brief conversation, some exchanges today. And I can't emphasize the fact what, what a good person he is and, 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 um, what a class act he is, even, even now in the middle of all this, him being in, on, on his honeymoon and, and, uh, this happening to him and his, his uh, wife. So, um, no, there was there was a lot of thank yous and and uh, you know it's it's just a, it's just a hard hard decision that we had to make. Yeah. Thanks, Sharma. Okay. Next, we'll go to Mark Shai. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Glenn. Hey, Yarmo. Um, in terms of the Bjorkstrand deal, did you feel like that you had to do something now? I know you have the whole off season to get cap compliant, but you know, what made you decide that you had to do something right now with him? Well, the funny thing about cap space is that once it's gone it's gone <laughs> you know you, you look at it league wide and you see it shrinking all the time and if you get yourself into a situation where the where the league wide cap space is pretty much gone then you have no opportunity to do anything so as i said we had we had a lot of not, not so good options in front of us and this was the best of them and and to wait would have been a huge risk for us to uh not become cap compliant and you can't you can't uh, you cannot be not compliant you have to start the year as as a cap compliant team and and um you know you don't want to be squeezed into a into a hole where you have to play short um you know with a short roster 19 men because you can't call up anybody if, if you have an injury and and so forth and we've seen some of that around the league and the, that we definitely didn't want to get into that situation and just one more for you on the good note you were able to get patrick liney for four years just he went through a lot of stuff last year, as you know, but what did he really show you that um, that helped you decide that this is what you wanted to get with him? I think we saw the real potential that he has and, and, and he's a young player still. So we believe in his growth. 
still and i think the term term is uh is real smart both for us and for him he's he's gonna get another kick at it when he's 28 years old and, and we get a player in his prime for for the years that we're doing right now if everything goes as planned then then we'll be looking at extending him again but um you know he was a point per game player for us and and went through some struggles when he when he really got on 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 his game he was uh, dominant at times this year and and um you know he can do so many things and he's big and he's he's got the reach and you know everybody talks about the shot but it, I think his passing skills are underrated um and and um you know we expect him to grow with our group that's that's the thing that this doesn't mean that he's arrived anywhere this means that that uh you know expectations are going to rise and 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 i'm sure he is the first one to say that he's he's got much bigger expectations for him and and um you know this is i think this is a good deal for both okay we'll go to brian hedger go ahead brian Hey, Armo, um, you know, right from the start of, of this reset process, uh, you, you and others have stated that the, the main goal is, is the Stanley Cup, um, obviously. Uh, I just wonder if you could maybe speak to the importance of, you know, in your mind of, of winning that prize, uh, of having two players, you know, two superstar type players and, and how important that is in that effort, because, you know, obviously since line A's come here, the, the whole roster has been overturned uh, or almost the whole roster has been overturned. And, and it looks like we're going down that road of obviously, you know, uh, you know, putting your uh, uh, eggs in the line A and, and, and could grow basket. Uh, who, who doesn't want good, good, two good players on their roster now. And now we have, we have a lot more than that too. And, and, and we've talked about our young core and, and those guys are going to keep growing and, and there's, there's a ton of potential and, and growth potential in, in, uh, in our roster right now with Cole Sillingers and Ken Johnson and Texier's and, and, and I'm, I'm not counting out our, our older guys uh, knowing that they're going to be pushed by these young guys for the roles and the ice time that they're going to get. So, you know, I expect Boone Jenner to come in again and have the best season of his life, like he did last year. And Voracek's hungry to uh, to prove again that that uh, he's not just a playmaker but a goal scorer as well. So, uh, I think this pushes everybody forward, and and um, you know that's that's the part that we want to always have nailed down is that that we're we're growing every day, and and um, you know we, with the depth chart that we now have, even with the guys that we don't expect to be. Uh, in Columbus or even maybe not even in the pros. I think that we're in great position now to grow in the next few years where we're going to be a real contender. You, you alluded to this earlier by say, you know, saying that, you know, of your options to, to reduce the cap, they were no good options really. Um, you know, and, and that the Bjorkstrand trade was the best of those no good options. I mean, without naming any names or anything like that, uh, can you give us an idea of, of how many options? I mean, like, like, would you get you would basically have to give up assets right to to move some of the other guys on your roster is that would that be fair to say uh all i can say is that that uh cap space is very 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 expensive so as i said this was the best option of the of the not so good ones okay thank you okay we'll go to kobe meyer go ahead kobe thanks glenn uh, good day Yarmo. obviously both parties have expressed that you guys want line eight to be here. He said he wants to be here, but as it dragged on, was there any point of like where you thought that this might not get done or, or when he didn't file for arbitration, was that a sign that there's light at the end of the tunnel and you guys were going to get something done? I had zero doubt. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll go to Aaron reports line. Go ahead, Aaron. Thanks, Glenn. Yarmo, you touched on this a, a bit earlier, but just to be precise, you know Line A's game as well as anybody. What heights, what numbers can this guy get to? What kind of production can he have? I don't think he's ever had quite a Johnny Gaudreau on his line, assuming that, that they play that way. And how intense do you think the competition is going to be in camp to play between those two guys among your centers? Every player on our roster wants to play as high in the lineup as they possibly can with the best players they possibly can. I think the players are 
eager to play with with uh, players of this caliber. It's up to Brad Larson how he wants to uh, do his lines. I'll be nudging him, as Torch used to call it. But um, you know, it, it's great. That's that's what pushes everybody to be better, and and that starts from practice. And 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 you know everything that I've heard from about Johnny Goodrow's practice habits, for example. He pushes himself every day to be better, and 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 uh, that's gonna that's gonna be a great example for our guys, our young guys in particular. That this is the standard here. I think that's been very high standard with us, even before. I think this will make it even higher, and um, you know that's that's what real re leadership is all about: is, is pushing everybody around you to be better, making play players better around you, and and I'm sure there'll be uh, plenty of competition to to play uh, um, high in the lineup. And do you feel right now as though you've got enough elbow room, sufficient elbow room to get through a season with the inevitable injuries that occur? Are you comfortable now under the cap? Oh yeah. Yeah. We were, we're fine now. And that's why we wanted to make, make this move because we, we needed the flexibility and, sure. Sure. and we have plenty of depth at forward and there's going to be a lot of competition for the roster spots. Uh, who's going to stay on the 23 man roster and, and I think that our defense is in good shape now too. Having said that, we're, you know, I'm not saying that we're done by any means. I always say this, that we're not done until the deadline for the 22-23 season. So we're, we're going to keep working at it and, and trying, trying to make our roster better every day. And that's, that's our job. And you still have, by my count, 15 or 16 sort of NHL type forwards. Do you feel the need to to thin that out before you get to camp or are you okay with the process of waivers, maybe thinning that out for you as camp moves along? Yeah, but you can also count the guys that don't need waivers. So we're fine. But again, we're going to be looking for every, every possible way to get better. Thanks, Jarmo. Okay, we'll go back to Mark Shai. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks, Lynn. One more for you, Yarmo. You mentioned Texier just a moment ago. Um, so is there any do you expect him to be ready for the start of the season and you know what do you expect from him if so yeah i i do and he was probably I, i've said this before that he was probably our best forward at the time when he uh he took the leave of absence and and um you know we'll, we'll be in contact with him and uh, regularly and constantly and and we hope that he's back and and feeling good and 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 taking another step in his career i thought he took a huge step last year and, and uh, played great. So um, that's, that's what we expect from him next year. 